Hello one and all, it's Nerdcraft here bringing you a Korean ladder match here spawning on the upper right hand corner of the... oh man, it's the sh the 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 sunken sunken sanctuary lost lost sanctuary I think it was oh I can never remember the name of this map but it's like one of my favorite ones out of the new maps um, is our blue Protoss player FXO Choya he, uh, for those of you who don't know him he is the um, captain for the Korean FXO team which was formerly known as FOU and then acquired by FXO and I think is pretty much the only part of FXO now because it seems like most of their Western um, players or their, most of their foreign players have left for complexity or quantic i think so yeah he's spawning on the upper right hand corner of uh the the lost sanctuary yeah we're gonna call it the, uh, the lost sanctuary because that's what i think the name is and his opponent here spawning on the lower right hand corner here cross positions is our red terran player liquid jinro and um for those of you who might recall a game I casted of general cross positions on the Lost Sanctuary, it was an hour and six minutes long. It was a TVT between um, him and Maru Prime. So if you guys haven't seen that game yet and you have quite a bit of time on your hands, 40, the video is 47 minutes long. Uh, go check that out. It's pretty freaking awesome. Like You would never guess that would have happened. Um, so yeah, it looks like Jinro is going to go for a wall off here. This can indicate um, uh, potential Banshee harass, maybe even Hellion. You usually don't see Hellion uh, harass against Protoss, although it has been making uh, quite a bit of a comeback as of late, uh, ever since MLG Anaheim, which was kind of like, you know, the year of the Hellion, when Slayers really established dominance, at least in the foreign world. Um, Gateway now, just finishing up for, Cho uh, for Choya. This is actually really exciting for me because Liquid Jinro, he's one of my favorite Terran players, one of my favorite foreign Terran players. And then Choya, who is a really cool guy, but I've never actually... Um, I've only seen like a handful of games in the GSL with him, and that was mainly GSTL that I saw him play. And I've never cast one of his games, so I'm really excited. I'm so glad I was able to find this... Um, this... Uh, this replay pack which by the way shout out to uh liquid for doing their uh uh this week in replays this was re this week in replays number nine which was featuring jinro and jinro lives in korea he even speaks korean pretty well uh so i was able to get this and man thanks team liquid you guys are freaking awesome so choya now scouting cross positions knowing where his uh, opponent is uh, jinro gonna try and scout that poor zealot he's like just not fast enough for those jetpacks and gonna get the full scout up in here. Uh, looks like Choya is gonna go for a one gate expansion, which uh, has, has kind of been a bit of a favored play as of late uh, against Terran. It can be pretty risky because Terran is able to really do that um, early expansion or that early pressure. But you know, um, Choya, I think he saw the Marine station there and kind of figured he's going for a uh, uh, expansion. So you know, Choya, Choya he's a pretty freaking good game, uh, player. Obviously, because he's the captain of FXO, which has a pretty good amount of freaking good players. And here we see from General two barracks coming up and another orbital command. So everything's pretty standard here. We have another two uh, gateways coming up here for Choya. And God, I love saying his name, Choya. It's so fun. Uh, gateway uh, warp gate almost actually done here. So it looks like everything so far pretty standard. Nothing too cheesy yet. Um, General not going for any sort of. Uh, Banshee or Hellion pressure like I kind of assumed earlier because I usually I don't know for me I don't really wall off unless it's against Zerg and so That's why I that's why I kind of assume when I see a wall off they're doing something sneaky and it looks like uh, Jinro is gonna go for his quick third and I thought I heard uh, a Medivac pickup, but that doesn't make sense because there are no star ports But no, it was just them going into the bunker and yeah hmm. Kind of curious is the income very even right now 26 27 probes to 24 uh, SCVs of course Jinro is ahead just a bit because of the uh, mules and also Jinro is not mining any gas at all this is completely gasless so far so Jinro has more SCVs on minerals as well as his mules so he's ahead in the mineral count but you know of course Choya is just destroying him when it comes to the gas count, mainly because it's like zero. And we might have some sort of pressure here coming out from Choya. Uh, very sentry centric. And uh, Jinro is seeing it, so he knows what's going down here. 
Uh, better put that to busy. There we go. Uh, bunker is just about done. There's a second one and a third one. No, no, that's a supply depot coming up. Uh, this is going to be very hard for Choya to do, and the Guardian Shields go up. Zealots uh, picking up at that uh, bunker, but the Marines immediately evacuate and then go back into it. Uh, nice SCV wall there, stopping any destruction from it. And um, these Zealots, they took out a handful of... Uh, took out a handful of SCVs. You see, he only took out two, actually. So, yeah, not exactly a great ch exchange for Choya, but... Uh, he is getting Twilight Council right now as well as his third, so uh, most likely going to go into charge. Blink Stalker is really good. It's kind of been the norm as of late, but I don't know. It seems like we're not seeing it against Terran as often as we see it against Zerg. Uh, and this Marine going to come in. He's going to try and see if he can pick off anything. Just getting a scout, making sure that those gases, that those gas aren't taken. And uh, they're not, obviously. So I think uh, Choya might be going for a very heavy zealot build. Two more gateways, three more gateways actually being added. And this is kind of like what I mentioned in that uh, Todd versus Sheth game. It's how, um, uh, it's how the uh, Protoss has been shying away from large amounts of um, large amounts of Colossus, and they've been, you know, sticking to very gateway centric armies, chargelets with uh, high Templar and. A lot of sentries really utilizing guardian shield finally which is something i did not get why pros didn't utilize up until now they didn't really utilize it as much as they do now i should say uh blink is actually being researched so yeah uh choya is going to go for a more blink stalker game this marine slowly working at that pylon and you know this is going to open up a lot of harass potential for choya like, he'll be able to um well he'll be able to blink up here uh but there is a ramp there and um uh, he'll be able to blink up here, which is the major one, and you know, really take out the um, mineral line there. So, your know, blink stalker it's really good when it comes to your micro, but it's also really good uh, harass potential. A lot of people kind of, um, I, I notice that a lot of people often overlook the harass potential of blink. Not pros, but just people, in, uh, just like regular players, um, they they don't really seem to realize that. Oh wow, like you can do this if you have an observer. I, it just it kind of seems like that to me, and this Marine, he is not going to see that pylon. He doesn't even see the probe. He does see this pylon, though. So, you know, that's always annoying when uh, your opponent is just making constant um, uh, pylons everywhere. And here from General, it looks like we have one tech lab, and, uh, one tech lab and two reactors coming up on these barracks. So, no doubt, very Marauder-heavy build. Uh, it's usually, again, the norm against... Uh, players uh, against Terran players and that probe was taken out this uh, this pylon has been finished though uh, he just needs to get vision up here and he can uh, by the looks of it warp in a stalker or two zealots and these guys uh, finally do see that pylon I don't think general really noticed it though and uh, another forge being added or no just a forge being added here for Choya right there I thought he had another forge up which is uh, usually more often, more often the case, um, very early uh, for the forges against Protoss, because they're like, you know, they they want to get that level one armor up right away, especially now that Choya is going for charge. That just makes zealots, you know, so much durable. And charge uh, zealots are as durable as they are already, and now they're going to be even more durable, which is pretty freaking scary when you come to think about it. So you see level one um, armor coming up here for Protoss player and three uh man three uh three stalkers and five zealots uh being warped in choya has he hasn't even made a robotics facility yet which is actually really surprising he's just sticking on this third and going extremely heavy minerals he only has uh four mining gas and usually we'd see you know all this gas being mined here and here's the engagement coming up choya is gonna He's going to send his charge, uh, his zealots in first. Unfortunately, charge is not done. Neither is the armor. He might be doing this a little premature. Great force fields there. Blocking off the majority of the army from Jinro. Great micro there from Jinro. Picking up the army that was trapped there and dropping them. And uh, Shoya is going to withdraw. And he's going to go for the third by the looks of it. There is only one bunker there. So he could easily do it. And um, all the zealots. Charge is finally done. But armor is not done yet. And the stalkers blinking up here great force fields there from Choya making it very hard for Jinro to get to that army uh, and even more force fields going down 
uh, just taking advantage of that range. Now, uh, eight zealots here being warped in, in the back. And uh, what am I doing without control W? This is just crazy action going on here. Uh, stalkers are, more stalkers coming in. These sentries have virtually been untouched. No ghosts are out on the field yet. Ghost Academy has been finished. And it looks like Jinro is going to be forced to move this, his third out, evacuate the third. And holy crap, just great play there from Choya. And Templar Archives is being made so the Archon and High Templar are going to be able to do some really good um, destruction there. Uh, going into the bunker now, I don't know if Choya should be going in here. This is a really tight choke right there. Uh, but he is going for it anyway, and um, Guardian Shield being really well utilized right now. And the sentry goes down, the Guardian Shield goes down as well, losing a majority of his sentries. They're not good at all. Uh, this sentry fortunately able to get out and check out that exchange. 23 SCVs have been killed now for Choya, and his army is steadily decreasing, but now he's going to go in for it anyway. And all the Zealots are gone. It's only sentries and stalkers, which against a Terran army is never a good exchange. Uh, Four, five more uh, zealots being warped in, but that, I don't think it's going to be enough. Going to try and pick out the medevacs here with those blinks forwards, and uh, Chargelt's coming in more and more, but unfortunately they're just not able to get the job done, and uh, that conch shell has really been hindering Choya, and now we have even more, uh, we have sentry warpings actually this time, Mobius reactor about halfway done, uh, actually no, I'd say about uh, two thirds done for uh, Jinro, and as soon as those uh, ghosts start coming out. This is going to be really bad for Choya because now he's not going to have those guardian shields or those force fields which really uh, being well utilized by him. A drop is being uh, uh, is being transported right now as to where it's going to go nobody knows. Looks like it is going to go for the main and try to, oh no actually for the third try to take out those mining facilities but Choya being the great player that he is he's going for his fourth right now he denied the third and went for his fourth so now he's going to be really ahead economically as we can see here uh, he's steadily taking the lead further and further and pretty soon there's going to be an even larger lead level two ground armor coming up here for Choya again just making sure that his zelts will not freaking die which they will not freaking die and he did have warp in of high templar which is exactly what he needs right now to be able to get that really great AOE. Now, sentries with chargelets is a really great composition, but you know you just always need some sort of AOE unless you're tearing uh, playing against Protoss because then you just you know you got a great you just have a you just have superior um, uh, what you call it you just have superior um, composition. Man, talk about a great freaking blink there from that stalker. Uh, Archon being morphed in right now. And uh, I think General Caesar, he knows that there are High Templar out on the field. So he is going to take out this Archon, but it does not die easily. Those ghosts, are, again, going to be just greatly utilized, whether it is um, whether it's Snipe or EMP. And great force field there from Choya. Uh, feedback going down on the ghosts before they can do anything. And uh, all the ghosts are pretty quickly cleaned up. Charge is coming forward. They are going to clean up these Marauders and Marines really easily. Uh, oh man, and even flanking warping right there for Choya, but unfortunately uh, not able to get the uh, behind it. And the charge coming in, there is another. There is reinforcements here from Jinro. Gonna cut off at the stalkers, take out a single High Templar. Great storm going down there. It takes out um, quite a few Marines in that process. Unfortunately, the High Templar goes forward and does die, but everything here is gonna be cleaned up by Choya. And now it's just small little skirmishes going around, and these stalkers are just trying to pick off some medevacs by the looks of it level three weapons upgrade coming up from Jinro. these stock these zealots are going to retreat two of them are lost level one ground uh, upgrade coming up as well as level three armor so these zealots are even going to be more scary than they already are the third has been re-established there for Jinro, and choya is just going to maintain control of the middle of the map and he's going to establish his fifth uh, while Jinro is just struggling to keep his third get his third established luckily he still has quite a bit of time quite a bit of time until his um uh until his natural is um until his natural is mined out uh, but we can see immortals coming out as well as the robotics base so it looks like choya is going to do a tech switch into colossus which is good because you know as uh, as not often as colossus are utilized anymore i still like them i still think they're a freaking cool unit and off double robo facility production this is going to be really great because it's going to completely catch Jinro off guard and he's not going to be able to make enough vikings of course top that off with the fact that he does have blink stock and he's going to be able to um he's going to be able to blink forward pick off the very few vikings that there are going to be so this is not looking good for uh general at all especially considering that he has another um uh so especially considering that choya has a sixth coming up on his way one two three four 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, six. Just got to make sure that I'm counting right. The Immortal, I think, has been revealed. The Observer's going to go straight through that scan and picked off relentlessly. Uh, and there's the army here. It looks like we are going to have another engagement. I am going to get ready with Control W. Spreading out his High Templar. Oh, man, they all go down to EMP, but fortunately there was a couple left over and Archons coming in, more Archons being more charges crashing against that army. Uh, they are just meeting lead and explosions, but unfortunately for Jinro, this army is not able to heal up as fast despite all these medevacs, and looks like um, the SCVs are going to be forced to pull. A Colossus is on its way as soon as that Colossus is seen, it is not going to be good for Jinro at all. EMP going down on the Archons, some Stalkers, and the Immortal, and there's the GG from Jinro. Holy crap, talk about a good game. That was really fun. I See, that's what I love about Jinro. Even if, even if he does lose, uh, his games are still really entertaining, and he's just really, he's really good at, um, in general, but of course, going up against Choya, uh, Choya is on a, a whole new level. He's a really, really good Protoss. If you guys have not seen him at all, like seriously, check him out. He is a really great Protoss. So yeah, that's all. My name is Nerdcraft. I hope you guys enjoyed this game as much as I enjoyed casting it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It just keeps me going. Also, you can follow me on Twitter if you so desire at at nerd at nerd underscore craft. Man, I botched that. Uh, you'll get a lot of information about you know when I'm going to be casting, when I'm going to be um, putting up videos, as well as when I stream. Uh, and then just also really weird tweets that I do about lizards mainly because there's a really cool iguana uh, on my campus that I like to hang out with and he's awesome. His name's Curry and I like to talk about him. So anyway, I um, hope you guys enjoyed once more and that's it. I am out.